Greetings and welcome to the Jesuits derooting the Reformation on December 4th, 2013. Well, tonight, tonight's broadcast, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit from the bottom of my heart what the motive and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the host here is, you know, is uh, Jörg Glisman of Belgium, Belgium, and my name is Walt Stickle, and I'm from uh, the United States. And, uh, you know, what makes somebody go to the mic and want to share? Well, we live, this is just came upon me the last couple of days, how deeply, deeply, we, we are so deeply programmed and indoctrinated and when you start talking about some of these subjects, it's it's so hard because it, some, to forget. And the only way for somebody to get interested in this is to do some research themselves. And so that's that's really our main goal: is that people that will listen and start looking at this history and understanding that this is something that's the, what we're talking about here is hidden. And another thing that came to me this last week, there's some of the lies that have been told us, uh, especially in this 20th century, World War I and World War II and on, all the way up to 2013 here, the lies are so deeply ingrained in, in the people because of the mass media that... Uh, that it's almost uh, impossible sometimes to even talk about this because the general population is not educated. And uh, our our outreach here is to understand is a biblical one too. I mean, and it all stems down to the title of this broadcast: the Jesuits derooting the Reformation. Now. I'm introducing Yurk tonight. I like to see Yurk. You know, what is the element? What is the main key thing that 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 the enemy is using to deroot the Reformation? And welcome to the broadcast. Yeah, thanks, Walt. Um, I have to admit that I don't quite understand the, the question. What you mean? What well, we have the Reformation derooting the Reformation. Yeah. And one thing that we haven't really uh, specified is is the Counter Reformation. To deroot the Counter Reformation is the shovel. You drive the shovel in to take the root out of a out of a tree. And yeah. and th- this is something that uh, the Counter Reformation, the history that we've seen since since the Reformation. It's all about the counter reformation. Is to counter the reformation, the light that we've seen, the little bit of freedom that we all share. In some places that we don't, we we, we don't even have the, the the freedom to come to the mic. And uh, legally and stuff, they have hate crimes and stuff. This, what we have, what we're doing right now, eventually is not going to be here for us. And what what has been behind this? but the counter-reformation. And again, <clears throat> Jörg is a German born in Hamburg, Germany. So this is, this is where the root was uprooted. This, this, is, this is where they're going back, the Jesuits are going back to dig up that root and, com- get completely and, and, and plant something else in its place. And that's why the, the title, the title is, is very, we, we, we didn't take very long to get the title for this series, but the more that I look at, this, at the title of this series, the Jesuits derooting the Reformation, you, you, when we, as we progress, you'll understand why there was a World War I and a World War II. So anyway, with that, that's when, in other words, I want to mention the, uh, your, uh, the Counter-Reformation and tell the audience 
what the Counter Reformation is about. In, in short, you know. Well, the Counter Reformation was especially set up. Uh, First of all, of course, after the Reformation. So first you have to have the Reformation that started in Germany by uh, by Luther, uh, who reformed not only Germany, but who also sent out a, a lot of people into the world, Netherlands and the other uh, countries, to get the Reformation on there. You have to, you, you, you know, this word Reformation and Counter-Reformation, these are just words sometimes spoken so easily without people really um, knowing what, what what do they mean uh, in our days that we live right now we cannot imagine living in the dark but even we are living in a very very dark place because we are pushed into the dark again by the Jesuits meaning at that time before the Reformation before 1517 when Luther nailed this 95 Thesis on the church door in Wittenberg in Germany first in Latin and then later translated them into German. People went to the church and listened to what the priest told them. And mostly what the priest told them was sometimes in their own language, but even more often, moreover, it was in uh, Latin. People didn't even understand Latin. Latin. People didn't have a Bible in their hands. Uh, the book print was not invented yet. Gutenberg invented the book print and with that the Bible, of course, and other books. But of course the Bible was uh, widely spread. But people were living in the dark of knowledge because there were no books. There was absolutely no education. I mean, there's no education today either. That's something else. There's just indoctrination. But you have at least the possibility to inform yourself and to educate yourself if you are interested in that. Can I interrupt you just quick? Yeah, please. Is what Yurk is talking about is, see, most people that are listening to this, we are, we are not taught anything about the Reformation. And if it is, it's, it's, it's just real lightly. But we are never talk, told about the Counter-Reformation. That's, I just want to drive that home. I mean, we that is... People, that's why people are, are going to school and going to universities and such, but they're not learning, they're not getting educated on the counter-reformation. This is, is so important. So, excuse me, uh, you go ahead, you So, yeah, um, I was busy with uh, explaining the, the reformation because nowadays we can hardly imagine what times of life it had been. Uh, some 500 years ago, when we think back, where people were left uneducated, and with that, they were very easy to control by their masters, whether that was a king or or a count or whatever, or, or an emperor, or a pope. I mean, and the people went into church, and they thought that everything that the priest said was right. So that's why when they sinned, they went there, and they paid their dues, uh, by paying some money, and they paid their way out of the sins, and um, and the priests forgave them, and they thought that was the way it was. Until, um, to make a long story short, uh, Martin Luther, who also was a Catholic priest, of course, in the beginning, came to his senses and saw how wrong the teachings were, and uh, that it had nothing to do with what stood in the Bible. And he swore himself to sola scriptura, which means only the written word counts the written word by God. And he wanted to then inform his people and give them the chance to adore the real Jesus because the Jesus of the Roman Catholic Church is not the Jesus of the Bible. There's a very, very big difference. The Jesus of the Roman Catholic Church is the Thomas of Babylon. And his mother Mary is Samaritus. That is when you go into the Roman Catholic Church, what's there. And only the real Jesus Christ, the Jesus that died for our sins in Nazareth at the cross, is the one who can forgive sins. 
No priest can forgive sins. No pope can forgive sins. You don't have to pay for that. You will not go into heaven by your works. You will only get into heaven by faith and by grace. That is what Jesus Jesus taught. And that is what real Christianity is all about. So first of all, you have to be careful when you speak out about Christians because Catholics like to disguise themselves as Christians, but Catholics are nothing more than people who are in the Babylon religious system that is thousands of years old and goes back to Nimrod, Semiramis, and Thomas, or in Egypt, Isis, Horus, and Seth. I-H-S, which brings me to then the Counter-Reformation, because the Jesuit seal contains in the sunburst the letters I-H-S, so-called uh, in, his ser- in his service for Jesus, but um, that has uh, another meaning that I can't uh, quote right now because I didn't prepare to write that down, but that's uh, in, in Latin, uh, and uh, it means something something very different. So the point being, Luther, with telling the people what really was standing stood so in the Bible, taught this, and then translated the Bible into the common German language, so that every peasant who was able to read could really read the Word of God. <coughs> Excuse me. By that, he took the power that Rome had over the people. He took that power away because the people got their eyes opened and they could see that they were just pawns on the chessboard they didn't even know they were on. The Reformation gave power to the people. The Reformation gave freedom to the people. The Reformation stands for everything that every person today who is born in Rome Sears thinks that he has. Basic human rights. That was unthinkable before the Reformation. That's why the Reformation is so important. So what is then the Counter-Reformation? That is the founding of the Jesuit order as a military arm of the papacy to make sure that every apostate king, every heretic, what the Roman Catholic Church defines as a heretic, shall either be killed or let back under the wings of the Roman Catholic Church. It's like what George W. Bush said after 9-11, either you're with us or you're with the terrorists. Either you're for the Roman Catholic Church and their beliefs and their doctrines, or you're against us. And when you're against us, we're going to kill you. And that is what already has been done during the Inquisition in the Dark Ages. And, of course, that was very widespread then with the Counter-Reformation, starting with the Council of Trent that took place between 1545 and 1562 or 63, I think, I guess, with some interruptions. And in that Council of Trent that was later renewed in the 1960s by uh, Vatican II, where it was just renewed. And that gives uh, that one was organized and led absolutely 100% by the Jesuits. And you have to dig into that for yourself to search out what is in those documents, what was actually said in the Council of Trent, and what was renewed uh, in Vatican II in the 60s of last uh, of the last century. Uh, you have to look that out for yourself because we are going to explain it everything uh, into detail. But uh, then you will see what the doctrine of the Catholic Roman Catholic Church is actually all about. And then you will understand what the point is. The point 
is and how it's always been. The Roman Catholic Church, the Pope of Rome, he is the Caesar of Rome. He sees himself as the ruler of the world. He sees himself as the victor of Christ, means sitting on the throne of God in place of Jesus Christ, which means Antichrist. And he considers himself as the king of the world, and nobody, and I mean not one person even, has the right to question him or even to stand against him. And if you do, you will be persecuted, you will be tortured, and you will be killed. And that is the whole point of the Counter-Reformation, to see that everybody who is free is again under the wings of the Roman Catholic Church, and by that, under their doctrine, and by that, again, a slave to Rome, and not free anymore. We will... A little bit later in this uh, in this uh, broadcast today, cover uh, the oath that has to be taken by a Jesuit. And uh, when you read or when when you hear what we have to read on this Jesuit oath, you will see that that is just the point. Everything is just done for. The, for the gain of the Pope and, and the, the Holy Mother Church of Rome. That's all it's all about. Wolf, got something? Uh, no. Right there? I, I was, uh, as you were speaking about the, the oath, there's really one paragraph that, that it explains it all in the oath, and I was just uh, on my on my way to find it uh, to to bring it up in front of me so I could uh, share it. So um, just give me a little just give me a just give me a minute here. Yeah, you take your minute, and I'm going to tell you uh, what this word. Uh, I wasn't I was wrong with this H uh, I H S. Uh, it was this word Inri uh, that is always written or often written about the cross of Jesus Christ. It means. That means justrum nica regis imperius. That's Latin, which meaning is, it is just to exterminate or annihilate impious or heretical kings, governments or rulers. And that is actually the slogan of the Jesuits. Yeah, come on, Walt. And now the now the start now the start of the of the oath. It's, it, uh, it says, my son, this is the first paragraph. And this kind of, this kind of, to read, we don't have to read the whole thing, but this just, because it's available up on the internet very readily to, to read the whole thing. But this is exactly their motive. It is, my son, here to, herefore ye have been taught to act the dissembler. Among Roman Catholics, to be a Roman Catholic and to be a spy even among your brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man among the reformers, to be a reformer among the Huguenots, to be a Huguenot among the Calvinists, to be a Calvinist among other Protestants, generally to be a Protestant, in obtaining their confidence to seek even to preach from their pulpits and to denounce with all the remembrance in your nature, our holy religion and the in the Pope, and even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews, that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. In other words, you know that it, it, it's a big. It's that shows you, you know. That's the counter-reformation, is to counter all of this, because Rome had lost her power. I mean, because the Reformation exploded. And uh, so in, it's very, very important to understand the word Reformation, counter-reformation. 
because when you do, you'll understand 2000, the, the events that we're facing here in 2013 is all about, and, 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 and the truth of it is, right, at the, in this time of history right now, it's, they pretty much overthrew the Reformation. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, what you just read, okay, that was a little bit jumping ahead of the plans that I had <laughs> to read that also. Um, I think it is uh, for many of our listeners even uh, maybe haven't even heard about this uh, Jesuit oath. I think it is very, uh, very interesting to see when this oath is taken. So the point is that when a Jesuit of minor rank, of minor rank, is to be elevated to command, he is conducted into the chapel of the convent of the order, which is the church of the Jesuit, where there are only three others present, the principal or superior standing in front of the altar. On either side stands a monk, one of whom holds a banner of yellow and white, which are the paper colors, and the other a black banner with a dagger and a red cross above a skull and crossbones. Skull and bones. Ever heard of that? With the word INRI, I-N-R-I, and below them the words Eustrum, Neca, Regis, Impius, means I-N-R-I, the meaning of which is, I just told you before, it is just to exterminate or annihilate impious or heretic kings, governments or rulers. Upon the floor, then, is a red cross at which the postulant or candidate kneels. The superior hands him a small black crucifix, which he takes in his left hand and presses to his heart. And the superior at the same time presents to him a dagger, which he grasps by the blade and holds the point against his heart. The superior, still holding it by the hilt, and thus addresses the postulant. And then the superior speaks the word that you just heard by Walt Stickel. I'd like to go on, because you say we shouldn't read all of those, but I disagree in that. We should read a larger part than that, what you just said. But of course, the uh, first uh, part that you just wrote, is, uh, or read, sorry, read, um, is very significant. And people really have to understand because there is so much disinformation out there on the Internet about the true New World Order, about the Zionist New World Order, again and again and again. And I get so sick that people do not want to understand. Here you have the oath of the Jesuits that is in the papers, officially in the records of the American Congress. That's where you can find this. We don't make this up here. By going along, you can read it. You can read it whether when you go to Washington and go into the library and read it there, or you can just read it online. It's found in the congressional records. And even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews. This is so important. Generally to be a Protestant among Protestants, or a Huguenot amongst Huguenots, even though, okay, today there are no Huguenots anymore. The oath is old and it uh, always contains everything. But you have to see that a Jesuit who has taken this oath is like a cadaver. He obeys without any own thoughts. He is like a dead, but he's like a zombie. And when you tell a zombie, go there, do that, he goes there and does that without any thinking for his own. That's what they do. And they will, they will be everything that their superior tells them to be. So when their superior tells them, you are a Catholic among a Catholic, or you are a Huguenot among Huguenots, or you are a Jew among Jews, then he will be that, just that to gather all the information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope, to gather all information. Well, think about this. What does that mean? That is the hint that is already given in this oath here, 
that all intelligent agencies in the world are run by the Jesuits and they all work together. But the Papa comes later in this oath also, openly openly uh, standing against each other, but behind the scenes with the same goal. To gather all information. So that is of the intelligence agencies. CIA, MI5, MI6, SIS, KGB, BND, Mossad. You name it. Don't matter. They all are Jesuit controlled. The Vatican has the highest form of information services, intelligence services in the world, always have had. And I guess that's something uh, for later this evening because um, I wanted to uh, read you some quotes about the Jesuit order and I think that also will really come on there. But now to get um, a little bit further in the O's, because I, I think this first, uh, this first uh, few sentences that Walt just said are of very, very uh, great importance, and people should not just once read it, but they should read it that many times until they really got it in the head what it really means. Now, you have to keep in mind that we are now talking about the Jesuit of minor rank who is to be elevated to command rank. So, when you are coming into a commanding rank, what does it mean? First of all, you have to understand the Jesuits are not a order of uh, like 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 in the convent. Uh, they are not an order of, of of belief. They are a military order. They are an army. And in the army, also you have a hierarchy. And you also have a hierarchy here in the Jesuits, for example. You know, Napoleon said, quote, the Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. Their chief is a general of an army, not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power in its utmost despotic exercise, absolute power, universal power, power to control the world by the violation of a single man. Uh, the volition of a single man. That's the Pope. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms and at the same time the greatest and most enormous of abuses. And then you have to understand that Adolf Hitler said the following about the Jesuits. I have learned most of all from the Jesuit order. So far, there has been nothing more imposing on earth than the hierarchical organization of the Catholic Church. A good part of that organization I have transported direct to my own party, the NSDAP. The Catholic Church must be held up as an example. I will tell you a secret. I am founding an order. In Himmler, who would become the head of the Nazi party, I see our Ignatius de Loyola, who was the founder of the Jesuits. Quote from Adolf Hitler. So the SS, that's what he's talking about, because Hitler, uh, Himmler was the chief of the SS. Um, that was the Sicherheitsstandarte, as we call it in Germany. But you can also say uh, Sons of Satan, or SS. The SS was in the hierarchy an organization formed after the Jesuit order. And after World War II, with Operation Paperclip, many of these people were adopted by the Americans, brought into the United States, and furthered their work there. And others escaped via Vatican red lines and lived on in South America. And why did they live on in South America? Not just because it's warm and sunny. No, because South America has always been a 100% Catholic. Go to Brazil, go to Argentina, go to Chile, go to Peru, 
all these countries have always been 100% under the Roman Catholic Church. And that's why the Vatican Red Lines and the people who fled uh, Nazi Germany at the end of the Second World War went all, and with thousands, tens of thousands, they went into South America. By this, by the way, very interesting, for wants to have a look at the national flag of Argentina with the Jesuit sunburst right in the middle in there. And of course, our high Jesuit provincial from South America, Pope Francis, now being the white Pope. And probably, as many people understand it, he is one of the three black popes that we have for the moment. I'm sorry, I'm dwelling a little bit apart, but I think this is very interesting information that you're getting here. Because you have to know, Peter Hans Kolvenbach resigned, so-called resigned, in 2008 as Superior General of the Society of Jesus. Something that has never in all of the history of the Jesuits, starting in 1540, has ever been before. Not one black pope, not one superior general of the Society of Jesus has ever been stepped aside in his lifetime from his post. Peter Hans Kolbenbach was the first. He gave way to Adolfo Nicolás, I don't think that Adolfo or Adolf is just a coincidence that he is named that. So since 2008, Adolfo Nicolás is the black pope. And then you have, in the beginning of 2013, the resign, the resignation of uh, Pope Benedict, which is also just the second in the history of all the popes since 1500 years, the second one to step down while living from his post. And another white pope placed, like when Kolmbach resigned, a new black pope was placed. Now a white pope is resigned and a white pope is placed. And this white pope happens to be what a coincidence, 15 years long, the provincial of South America of the Society of Jesus, the one who from Argentina runs the whole continent of South America. He is a Jesuit of the fourth vow, a part of the vow that we just read, that is now exercising the office of the white pope and when you think of how the Jesuits like a trinity, when you have three different black popes all together. The one who is in power right now, if you ask me, is Pope Francis. And the other ones, Adolfo Nicolás and Peter Hans Kolzenbach, are his assistants. What are your thoughts on that, Walt? Yes, I mean, and, and this has all transformed within the last year. A year ago, we didn't, you know, and that this is a sign. This is a sign too that the Protestant Reformation has been overtaken. And because when they can put a Pope in in the Vatican without anybody saying anything, or tells us that no one has any history of the Jesuits. I mean, it's it's so important, you know. The second vow, the the the, the second paragraph in the vow, it says, "You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states that were at peace, and incite them to deeds of blood. That's war. Involving them in war with each other, and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous." We've seen this all through history, and that's where we're going when where we're, you know, to understand the Third Reich, you have to understand the First and the Second Reich. 
and this is what's been so heavy on my heart the last couple of days as I realized just how deeply indoctrinated we, we, we are as a, as in the world. People are not being educated. They're being indoctrinated. They can't say that enough because, because people, you, you can't, some of these lies are so deeply ingrained that when you bring them up, all you get, all you bring up is 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 hate, and it's hate out of ignorance, because the general masses don't have an education, and uh, this is this is the gold of this broadcast is for for we can't cover this in an hour or such, but we're trying to incite research. We're not in here. If we incite research, knowledge knowledge is power. And in the Bible, it tells us that people in Hosea four six, it says that people will perish for the lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. That's paraphrasing, but that's what it what it said. And so, you know, you know, this uh, the, the the Jesuits are very very important to understand and and again we go back to the title of this broadcast you see you see it's Germany as the broadcast we're not going to go there now but you'll understand why Germany has been punished so so profusely I mean I mean it, it's it, from, from the 30-year war in the 1600s to two world wars? Who's been inciting these revolutions and wars? It was the Jesuits. Twelve million people died in the Thirty Year War. Over sixty million people died in World War Two. So that's where that's why it's so important to understand the Reformation and the derooting. Because when we get to the Third Reich, you'll you'll see the shovel being shoved into Germany to get rid of that root, and that root is the Reformation. So that's that's my comments, uh, Jörg. Yeah, um, it's almost a shame that you stopped reading this oath. That the part where it comes where it becomes very interesting, and anybody that has followed our four broadcasts before this knows that last week I was reading about this 30 years that the German Second Reich uh, that was founded by Otto von Bismarck in 1871, how prosperous that was. And the point is that I have to repeat this, uh, this uh, sentence that you read from the, from the old, the uh, second, um, uh, second part of it, because I have to read this to the end and the people really, really think about what is said here and think about on what countries that you can oppose this on. So, you have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states and, uh, that were at peace and incite them to deeds of blood involving them in war with each other and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous. Cultivating the arts, think of Germany, as of Goethe, Schiller, Beethoven, Bach, all the musicians, all the philosophists, all the poets that we have, cultivating the arts and the sciences, well, who invented the tar, as we know it, who invented the combustion, internal combustion engine, Otto, and uh, Rudolf Diesel, Germans, and enjoying the blessings of peace, because after 1871 Germany finally had peace. It was a united, it was uh, for the first time a nation state, and it enjoyed the blessings of peace and was prosperous. Continue to take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit, who might be engaged on the other side but openly opposed to that with which you might be connected, only that the church might be the gainer in the end. 
in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace and that the end justifies the means. So I really think I had to read this part of the Osmother because this is so important. To take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit who might be engaged on the other side, but openly opposed to with which you might be connected. Now, when we have some American listeners, I want them to think about the sport or so-called sport wrestling. And one of the guys that I really loved in the time, and that is now affiliated with Alex Jones, Jesse Ventura, who was a professional wrestler, they are giving you a show to die for on the television. They are openly opposed, but they are actually working for the same side. As long as it's in the open, as long as it's in the show, they almost kill each other, just in the show. And afterwards, they clap each other's shoulders and go to drink a beer together. And that's exactly what the Jesuits do also. The whole theater they are playing with the president of Syria or the president of Iran or this... uh, Kim Jong-un Jong in, in the North Korea, or whoever oppose uh, the United States or United Nations or whatever, you have to see the Jesuits always control both sides. And that is something that goes back to a quote um, that I found uh, from Lenin, And Lenin said, the best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. So that means that both sides are controlled by the same. And that's just what the Jesuits do. The Jesuits have infiltrated every government of the earth. They rule every government. And even though they are openly opposed, you can be sure that behind the scenes they are connected and work together and they will use any means necessary that the end justifies the means and the end is the benefit of the Pope. Well, to read a little bit further in this oath, quote, You have been taught your duty as a spy. A spy. Remember what I said about the intelligence agencies all over the world? Continue. To gather all statistics, facts, and information in your power from every source to ingratiate yourself into the confidence of the family circle of Protestants and heretics of every class and character as well as that of the merchant, the banker, the lawyer, among the schools and universities, in parliaments and legislatures, and the judiciaries and councils of state, and to be all things to all men for the Pope's sake, whose servant we are unto death. I'd like to make a comment. uh, Please. You know, the, the, it's to be all things to all men for the Pope's sake. Now, a, a year ago, we could we could say said that, okay. But today now, we can say, and to all things to all men for the Jesuits' sake, whose servants we are on to death. You know, I mean, in other words, they, they, the black Pope, a year ago, we had a black Pope and a white Pope. But... Uh, and one other thing I wanted to comment to while I was speaking here is it's a good example. It's professional wrestling. I mean, you know, people really get into professional wrestling, and they and, and they know and they know that it's a show, but it still it still fills the the stadiums and. 
I mean, and, and they know. Well, that's the same way with these false flags that we've had through history. And one of the biggest ones that's fresh on our mind is 9-11. Look at it as a wrestling match. It was a show. It was theatrics. And who benefited? It, I mean, and it, and right from the get go, they know who the winner. What, what they were controlling all facets of that, and that's one of the reasons to even today was heavy on my heart. Look how ingrained this is into people's. They, they turn two buildings to dust right in front of us. And people in the world can't see it. Why do I say they turn two buildings to dust? Because once you understand that they turn two buildings to dust, everything that you have been taught and have learned on the mass media, da 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 da, is a lie. And right now it's being written into our history books. That 19 camel jockeys knocked those two buildings and caused them to turn to dust. It's not even a good wrestling match when you sit back and look at it. But anyway, that that's that's my comment, so Yerk. No, oh, you're, you're absolutely right. I just wanted to take... Uh, something that people can envision that the picture before their eyes when they see this fighting uh, this restless fighting just for the show and they of course do not know often most of the times that it's just for the show and um, that these arrangements are being made on a level so low as wrestling, but they are also being made on levels as high as world politics. That is something that I wanted to point out there. Um, And of course, as wrestling people, just take the attention of everything else that is important or that could be important in your life. I mean, we we are already quite far in our uh, broadcast today. I don't know. We, we uh, won't have even time to go through all the general code. But what we have now been spoken about, this was when a Jesuit of the minor rank is being to be elevated into command, what the superior speaks there. This were three, uh, three little parts. Now there's a fourth part that is also very important and uh, probably we will we will close after this with a little discussion on something else but uh, first i want to read this uh, this fourth part again uh, for the first time now but i want to read this fourth part now quote you have received all your instructions heretofore as a novice a neophyte and have served as a coadjurer confessor and priest but you have not yet been invested with all that is necessary to command in the arm of Loyola in the service of the Pope. You must serve the proper time as the instrument and executioner as directed by your superiors, for none can command here who has not consecrated his neighbors with the blood of the heretic, for without the shedding of blood no man can be saved. Therefore, to fit yourself for your work and make your own salvation sure, you will, in addition to your former oath of obedience to your order and allegiance to the Pope, repeat after me. End quote. You see, all the things we were just spoken about, we have just spoken about, are just the basics. The basics of every one who is affiliated with the Jesuit through their schooling and who is joining the Jesuit order. He is a novice, he is a neophyte, he is a coadjurer, he is a confessor, he is a priest, 
but he didn't have any command. He was just the executioner of orders. And now this oath is going further to those people who are now being put into the ranks of the high Jesuits. You know, to my knowledge, there are today on the earth about, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Walt, I thought about 20 Jesuits who are of the fourth world. It's a very, 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 very small group. Am I right with this 20? Do you know anything about that? Because that's my information that I have. Or am I wrong there? No, I couldn't tell you just exactly the number. You know. No, I don't know the exact number also, but I know it's about 20. Yeah, you, 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 it's a very elect, very, very small number. And, and, and you see, a lot of times when we when, when people we talk about the Jesuits, you have to understand we are, we've already talked about spies and intelligence. They control the intelligence. In other words, let's say there's somebody working for the CIA. Your neighbor works for the CIA. Is he a Jesuit? Uh, no, well, no, but who is he gathering information for? See, I mean, that's how, that's how, I mean, it, it is the most evil, wicked. I mean, the Jesuits have been kicked out of over 80 countries. And most of those were Catholic countries. And why we know that why we know the Reformation has been overcome is because they they boldly they boldly put a Jesuit in the Vatican. That's why we know how far along we are in history. That's why we appeal to people, anybody listening that would like to come on the broadcast, please contact us. You can contact us on on our web on our website at granddesignexposed dot com, and uh, uh, because because the, the, like we started off the broadcast, the goal of this is to get people to to quit going to the NFL, the football games and the basketball games, and get out of the treadmill. And another thing too. You know, we've all watched movies. There's none of us here that are listening to this and haven't watched the, the movies. You know, and and what's so, so interesting to me is is your Yurk lives in in Belgium, but I mean Hollywood is is produ- they produce Hollywood for the whole world. That's and, the only thing America still does export. They don't have any goods anymore to export. The only thing they export. Is this Hollywood brainwash and ammunition. movies, movies and TV series? I mean, go on the internet, go on the go on the internet site where you can watch TV series like I don't know Big Bang Theory or or, or whatever, and, and 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 look how many series they are offering, hundreds if not thousands. Yes, yes. I mean, it is it is it is an and the and the tool that we have right now. How can we? How, you know, we don't have a corporate audience. You know, we're not. We don't have sponsors. This is just two of God's children going to the mic. So, so when you listen to this, you know, if it interests you, if you get something, if if it incites you for research, send it. You know, send this link on. Because. We don't have a million dollar studio. Yurk and I have. We don't. We don't want one. <laughs> and we don't. And we, and we don't want one. And we're not asking for 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 a ten thousand uh, dollar donation. If you send us ten thousand dollars, we're going to send it back. Yeah. You know, it, it's 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 like, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's uh, it's so that that's the main thing is 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 for the common people. See, the common people are not. Getting the information, the lie that's what's so been so heavy on my heart this week. Is there so much? And Yurk mentioned it. It's there's so much misinformation, you know. And 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 so this is this is this is the reason. And would you know would uh, be, it would uh, give us a lot of encouragement if we get got us some got some email and or if anybody that would like to be a guest and come on and comment. 
make some comments, you know, especially people uh, that are abroad, you know. Uh, it's uh, but so anyway, uh, uh, I, I just thank you for listening, and uh, we're getting down to we got about five minutes, so you can go ahead and finish off what you want to uh, uh, finish off with the year. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I would uh, really like to go further into the extreme oaths uh, of the Jesuits to the part that comes after the part that we just read. Um, and then we can maybe use this week uh, to see if we get some reactions on the website. You know, there are contact dates uh, uh, on. Uh, you know how to contact me, uh, Jobless66, via my YouTube channel. And uh, uh, Walt is also contactable via his site, uh, Grand Design Exposed. Uh, you can go to that, ho- to that main site, uh, Grand Design Exposed, and there's the possibility to contact him also. So maybe when we get some uh, feedback of the thing that we told today, <clears throat> but I think uh, I, I'd love to go into the extreme oath of the Jesuits a little bit further, and then we can still uh, next week go into that any further when we have some responses on that. Okay, Walt? Okay, when you don't say anything, I think you agree. So I quote, I, AP, name of the, um, name of the uh, superior of minor rank who takes his oath. I, now in the presence of Almighty God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Michael the Archangel, the Blessed St. John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul, and all the saints and sacred hosts of heaven, and to you, my ghostly father, the superior general of the Society of Jesus, founded by St. Ignatius Loyola in the pontificate of Paul III, and continued to the present, do by the womb of the Virgin, the matrix of God, and the rod of Jesus Christ, declare and swear that His Holiness the Pope is Christ's vice-regent, and is the true and only head of the Catholic or Universal Church throughout the earth. And that by virtue of the keys of binding and losing, giving to this holiness by my Savior, Jesus Christ, he hath power to depose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths, and governments, all being illegal without his sacred confirmation, and that they may safely be destroyed. Therefore, to the utmost of my power, I shall and will defend the doctrine of his holiness, right, and custom against all usurpers of the heretical or Protestant authority, whatever, especially the Lutheran of Germany, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and the now pretended authority and churches of England and Scotland, and branches of the same now established in Ireland and on the continent of America and elsewhere, and all adherents in regard the Bainey usurped and heretical, opposing the sacred mother church of Rome. I do now renounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical king, prince, or state named Protestants or liberals, or obedience to any of the laws, magistrates, or officers. I do further declare that the doctrine of the churches of England and Scotland, of the Calvinists, Huguenots, and others of the main Protestants or liberals to be damnable, and they themselves damned who will not forsake the same. I do further declare that I will help, assist, and advise all or any of His Holiness's agents in any place wherever I shall be, in Switzerland, Germany, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, England, Ireland, or America, or in any other kingdom or territory I shall come to and do my uttermost to extirpate the heretical Protestants or liberal doctrines and to destroy all their pretended powers, regal or otherwise. End quote. Okay, Okay. we're getting right up to the close there. You know, uh, well, anyway, listen. I, I'm gonna. I was gonna play a song to finish off. The, to finish off. So anyway, you go ahead and give any contact that you have, and then I'll I'll end with a song. Okay, I just don't have anything to finish uh, right now. Here, we have had some quotes of the Jesuit order. 
and I thought that uh, very interesting. And then we went into the uh, into the O. So yeah, just play that song. That would be nice to end with that. Anyway, I think every uh, I, I thank everybody who listened to our broadcast today. Hope we will get some responses, some contact about that, and uh, hope to hear from you all again. And uh, God bless you.